Hello, experimenters. I am Seth Noir. The man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting. He's just seen ain't loud. I have good news, experimenters. I have found inner peace. And inner peace is only found by understanding circuits. <laughs> series and parallel circuits to be exact. So let's start with some parallel resistors, R1, R2, R3 in parallel. We want to try to find a way to represent all of these circuits as one number. So we start by remembering that an electric force is the same and as a gravitational force in that it's conservative. In other words, if I have a mass and I move it in a gravity field, the net work is zero if I start and stop at the same spot. It's a conservative force. Or if I go through any path at all from one point to the other path, it's the same work to get from one path point to the other point, no matter the path. This helps us. An electric force is the same. So the voltage drop across this path must be the same across that path, must be the same across that path, all the voltage drops across the three must equal one voltage V. Ah, but the current is a different story. The current, I, would be flowing through the circuit, and then here it will encounter a fork in the road. And now each of these currents across these three resistors, add them together, and it should equal the current in the circuit, I. Ohm's law action is next. For this I will equal the V divided by the parallel resistance combination. And that will equal the sum of the other currents. And then all of these cancel out because of the same, leaving this, which finally gives us what we want. That is, the parallel resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 all raised to the minus 1. Don't you dare forget that minus 1. That's a very common mistake. Don't you dare forget it. Okay, series resistors. Ah, slightly different story this time. And that is, if you have a voltage, say a voltage drop from here to here, it's not the same through each of them, but the current is the same through each of them. And that is, if we have a current coming in one, all that current's going to leave out the other side. A resistor is not a reservoir or current. Current is not going to build up inside. So all the current coming in one end will go out the other, and then it'll go in one end and out the other, and one end and out the other. So all the currents equal a plain old I. The voltages are a different story. If you have a voltage, say V, from here to here, well, that must equal the sum of the three voltage drops. So V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. More Ohm's law action. This V will equal the current times the series combination, which is what we want, equals the sum of those three voltages, and then the currents cancel out, leaving what we want, that the series resistance is the sum of the three resistors. All right, terrific, terrific. So, let's get started. Let's get started. So, here's our circuit board. Look at what we have here. Here are our three resistors. All right, so the resistors are here, and they're connected to wires in the nodes, like we're familiar with. I mean, uh, these. Okay. So now, we use our friend, Agilent 34405A. Switch to Omega. And then, Find the resistance. 
All right, so put it across one of them. Put it across to find R1. Make sure we're on the proper scale. Can we do better than this? No, no, we can't. So notice we're on the order of kilo ohms. All right, and then move it down for R2. Do a little better. And then move it down R3. All right, great. Great. Now, we're going to make use of these connecting wires to put them in parallel. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, okay, so we need these to share the same potential drop across both of them. So I'm going to put R1 and R2 in parallel first. So I put these here, and I'll put this there. Now R1, R1 and R2 are in parallel. And now I'll put those in parallel with R3. R1, R2, R3 are all parallel. A way you can check is that you can take your hand, go right down the middle, and nothing will stop you. All right, so now to find, to directly measure the resistance, take your friend, the Agilent 34405A, and it doesn't matter quite where you put them as long as they're on opposite sides. So I could put one side in here, the other side here, measure the resistance. Uh, because they all share the same common voltage, I could move these. I could move this, say, down there. I can move this up here. It should all be the same. The mistake would come is if you put them on the same side. Don't put them on the same side. That's a no-no. All right. All right, terrific. All right, let's start over for the series. Okay? All right, so now this red knob here is screaming to be where the current goes in ultimately. So I'll start here. I'll put R1 in series with R2. So let's go here, and done, and done. And now R2 is in series with R3. So da da, da here, 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 out. Another way you could do this is some people like the diagonal action. You know, let's put so it goes here, and then put this diagonally here, and then here, put this diagonally here. All right, so we'll go from here to here, across R2 to here, across R3, and out. Whatever. A big mistake is to do this, to put it the wire directly across one of them. No, no, no. See, what was going to happen is that the current is going to completely ignore the resistor and go just through the wire. That's called a short circuit, children. Don't do that. Okay, so now, here, here, and now let's measure the resistance of all three. Now, we've got to be careful we put it here. We don't have quite as much freedom as the parallel. So I'm going to put it where it starts, here and then go through all three and comes out here. Change the scale. There we go. Measure. That's the resistance of all three in series. All right. Terrific. Terrific. All right. So I'm going to leave this like this because we're going to need this in a